Welcome to Social Allo Ministries, where we are committed to glorifying God while exposing the devil. One of the worst feelings for a servant of the Most High God is to know that the Lord had an assignment for them, but because, quite frankly, they were disobedient. Whether because they got distracted, they were procrastinating because of doubt, etc. The Lord took their assignment and gave it to someone else. And the Lord doesn't have to condemn you. He simply gives you a view of someone else doing what you know you should have done. And <laughs> it is not a good feeling. Because sometimes the Lord gives you something and because you don't move fast enough, he'll give it to someone else. Because it's not always like Jonah where he insists that you do it. He always have people in reserve. Those who are more obedient than you if you're not careful. And you may end up like Queen Vashti or King Saul. More on them later. An example of how the Lord will let us know that we're in error. It is so simple. And someone who really felt that was Peter. The Lord told Peter that he's going to deny him three times before the rooster crowed. And in the process of denying the Lord, Peter probably wasn't even thinking about that prophetic word that he received. But in Luke 22, starting verse 60, And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. All Jesus did was look at him. And it may not have been a look of condemnation, but simply a look. Have you ever had your opportunity walk away from you? Has the Lord ever given your opportunity to someone else? Because quite frankly, you were disobedient. King Ashuerus was one of the most powerful men at the time. He was the most powerful man in the face of the earth. A large kingdom. And Vashti was his queen. In fact, in Esther chapter 1, in verse 1 it states, Now it came to pass in the days of Ashuerus, also known as Xerxes. This is Ashuerus, who reigned from India, even unto Ethiopia, over an hundred and seven and twenty provinces so 127 provinces he was king Vashti was queen so King Ashwaras was throwing a banquet Vashti was a beautiful woman she was having a banquet of her own the king summoned her because he wanted to show off his beautiful bride but she refused She refused to do what the king had asked. Now, how well do you think that was going to go? There are times when I say that one of the beautiful things about evangelizing at times is sometimes communicating a message about God without using his name. Communicating a message about God without using his name. And the book of Esther is an example of that. But we can learn things about the nature of God by reading the book of Esther. So the king called his beautiful bride Vashti so he could show her off. 
but she refused. And starting in verse 15, the king asked, What shall we do unto Queen Vashti according to the law? Because she had not performed the commandment of the king Asherus by the chamberlains. And Memucan answered before the king and the princes, Vashti the queen hath not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes and to all the people that are in the provinces of King Asherus. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes, when it shall be reported that King Asherus commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, and she, but she came not. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes, which have heard of the deed of the queen. Thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. If it please the king, let there go, uh, go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and Medes, that it be not altered, that Vashti come no more before King Asherus, and let the king give her royal estate to another that is better than she. The suggestion was that they find someone better than Vashti. Now you'd think that with 127 provinces that Queen Vashti was the best woman in the land. And maybe she thought the same thing too. That she was the creme de la creme. That there was no replacement for her. Well, it clearly states that they're going to get someone who was better than her. And they found a Jewish young lady, Hadassah, who's known as Esther. And she ended up replacing Vashti because Vashti was not willing and obedient. Vashti was disobedient, so the king found someone else. Some of you have encountered that where the Lord told you to do something, but you didn't do it, sometimes at all, or you took too long, so he found someone else who was willing and obedient. I won't say someone better than you, but someone who was willing and obedient while you were slacking off. In some cases, you will see someone else wearing your crown and you'll know that it could have been on your head but you were not willing and obedient. King Saul, he went through something similar because the Lord had Samuel the seer anoint him as, as the first king of Israel. But then the Lord sent him an assignment to utterly destroy the Amalekites, even the animals destroy them a simple command destroy everything everyone in 1st Samuel 15 Samuel the seer came by after the battle and starting in verse 13 of 1st Samuel 15 and Samuel came to Saul and Saul said unto him blessed be thou of the Lord I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, What meaning than this bleating of the sheep in mine ears, and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed the Lord didn't tell him to take the best the Lord said destroy everything 
One of the first terms I learned in the military was the term FFI, failure to follow instructions. Failure to follow instructions. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord had said unto me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? And the Lord sent thee on a journey, and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore, then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord had sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of the Amalekites, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as the iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now therefore, I pray thee, part my sin and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. And as Samuel turned to go away, he laid hold on the, upon the skirt of his mantle, and it rent. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and hath given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou. Better than thou. And also, the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. King Saul did not fully obey the Lord, and by not fully obeying, he was disobedient. So the Lord found someone who was better than him, a man after his own heart, David. Whichever position you're in, do not feel as if you're the only one who can execute the task. Do not feel as if you're the Lord's only option. Believe me, he has many choices. There's some people who are in positions and they're about to be, they're about to be replaced. They are about to re be replaced. In some cases, they have let pride puff them up. And they're not truly listening to the Lord anymore. They're doing their own thing. And the Lord has people who are willing and obedient. In some cases, they have been waiting in the wings. Not waiting for a person to mess up, but they have been waiting in the wings. Kind of like a David. They have been anointed. But they have been doing the things the Lord has been asking them to do. Simply waiting for the time when they become appointed. They have been anointed, but they are waiting to get commissioned. They are willing, and they are obedient. When I mentioned about never getting to the point where you feel as if you're the Lord's only choice, or maybe you're the Lord's most anointed, Elijah was on the run from Jezebel, and he had an experience with the Lord.
in 1 Kings 19, starting in the 14th verse. Elijah said, I have been very jealous for the Lord of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even I, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. So Elijah was saying that he was the Lord's last prophet. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, or Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, the Abelhomla, Okay, I'm butchering that. Let me slow down. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Mehola, Abel Mehola, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. So the Lord had a replacement for him. And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazael shall Jehu slay. And him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Mm. I can tell you that many, not many people escaped from Jehu. He was the one who lured all the, or a lot of Baal worshippers into a temple and he told him to search to ensure that there weren't any worshippers of God within the temple and he had his men kill all those worshippers Jehu did not play around it was also Jehu who ordered the eunuchs to throw Jezebel down Jehu was not playing he did not play around so when Saul was allowing people to live like Agag, the king of the Amalekites, and taking the best of the land, Jehu was, or Jehu executed the Lord's will. Mm. But it continues, Yet I have left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. Elijah was saying he was the last prophet left. The Lord told him to go anoint Elisha as his replacement. But he also mentioned that there were 7,000 who were in Israel who had not worshipped other false gods. The Lord, he has choices. If he gives you the honor of choosing for something, it's an opportunity you may not want to miss. You squander it. You may never get another chance. He has choices. In the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 1 verse 18, Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. So if you're willing and obedient about eating the best of the land. But quite frankly, when it comes to the Lord, it's not about what you get by being obedient. It is simply about serving Him because of who He is. 
So it's not about personal gain. If anything, it's about simply the satisfaction of being obedient to the Lord. Because a lot of times you just get a euphoric feeling. Because one of the many rewards the Lord will give you is a sense of peace. Peace that transcends human understanding. So for example, there are times when he will stir up your spirit when he wants you to do something. And when you do that thing, you could just get the sense of overwhelming peace. It's like the Lord saying, job well done. You truly don't want to see someone else getting something that the Lord had ordained for you. It is almost like um, in Genesis 29, when Jacob had been engaged to Rachel for seven years, but the night they were supposed to get married, Leah got into the mix. And he ended up consummating the marriage with Leah. And Rachel missed out on that. But that's another story. And one I've, I've probably told more than enough. There are times when the Lord wants us to do something. And there will be a lot of information to go off. When we make the moves that he wants us to do, then he will reveal more. Abraham, who was initially called Abram, had an incredible life. And it started with a simple calling. He simply had to be willing and obedient to be faithful with the little the Lord had told him to do, and the Lord would give him more. In Genesis 12, starting verse 1, now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, and unto a land that I will show thee. Unto a land that he will show him. So he knew he had to leave his, his family and his country and go somewhere. He didn't know where, but he had to be willing and obedient but the Lord gave him a little bit more information and I will make thee of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing and I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse at thee and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abraham took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. That was the beginning of Abraham's incredible journey. It would mark the birth of the nation of Israel. But the Lord didn't give him all the information at once. But Abraham knew that he heard from the Lord and he obeyed. And as time went on, he found out even more. If you know the Lord has told you to do something, kind of like Gideon in Judges 6 and 7, you've tested the spirits and you know that it is the Lord wanting to do something, please do just that. Because I can guarantee that if you're not willing and obedient, that there are many of the people who have been waiting a, a long time for the opportunity and they will not procrastinate. They will not procrastinate. They won't ask a lot of questions. Basically, all they need to know is because the Lord said it, and that is what they're going to do. I can imagine what Peter felt like when the Lord looked at him 
and he knew that he had messed up. If you've never been in a position where the Lord had something for you, but because of what can be categorized as disobedience, he ended up giving that thing to someone else. And you have to, and it's not that he condemns you, but you realize that what he had for you, what he had for you to do, he had to give it to someone else because it needed to get done. And rather than being a helper, rather than being his helper, you have become a hindrance. I'll leave it at that.